A warm welcome to all our viewers to our series Natural Medicine today. Today we're going on a journey with TCM to strengthen our inner center and chi. I specially invited an author for this, Dieter Holler. He is a specialist in general medicine, but also an expert in TCM has gained the knowledge of secret Chinese medicine from the barefoot doctors in China for years. And today we're going to talk about his special tea blends that he makes available in the book so that we have an opportunity at home to benefit from this knowledge. Stay tuned. Hello, dear Dieter. Thank you for coming Hello, again. Karina. I love our programs that we really go into practice and all the knowledge that you collected in China. Anyway, also your whole wealth of experience with the diagnostic possibilities that you incorporated into a book. And today I would like to address this with you, with you this inner center, this chi. What does it even mean? in TCM. Above all, how do I find my inner center when I am outside? Okay. Uh, qi is a term in Chinese medicine, but it's also important in Chinese culture. That signifies our vitality. In China, it's said that one cannot live without qi. Without qi, a stone could not be as it is. Without qi, a plant could not be as it is. Qi is such a basic primal life force. Is it also when a person dies? What happens the moment you notice? Exactly, yeah. The, the qi will not be there after death. Qi is also very connected to things like movement, but not only external movement, but also internal internal movement, so digestion, that's called transformation in China, food in qi. Qi ultimately comes from food. We also get qi from our parents. And there's still something that's not taught or appreciated by all, but it's true. Something else comes with conception, something like a heavenly qi. That sounds nice. Qi of heaven, yeah. And this chi of heaven, without that, there is no life in this very old teaching. Well, with the shamans, with the Chinese, it was always like that. And today, it's a bit neglected, but it's too spiritual. But I think it's wonderful. I think it's beautiful too. Because chi of heaven, does that have something to do with our task here? Of course, it's something to do with it. It, it also shapes us. There's another term, the so-called essence. It's called qing. It's a force a substance in us that is also not material, that determines us in our life. It determines the course of our life. It determines from home that we grow from infants to babies, from babies to teenagers, from teenagers to the elderly, to the very old, to death. This qing itself contains what defines us. It also determines our constitution, so our weaknesses, our strengths that we have, not only in relation to health, but also our skills. There's already a lot that comes along through heaven, but also through our parents. And we know that too, certain skills recur in certain families. Mm -hmm. If I then notice that this Qing is disturbed, it would mean to a certain extent that I would not make any progress in life, that somehow things aren't going right. Yeah. Can I also support this via TCM? Yeah, it's said in the ancient books in China that qi cannot be regenerated. It's all about preserving qi in your life. So, qing to be exact. With qi it's a bit different. You have to preserve qing and don't waste it. Waste would be, for example, having a bad work-life balance, possibly sleeping too little, not allowing yourself any rest, working too much, or there are those who always say too much textuality that also uses up Xing. And I would perhaps see it that way, would say that he or she who has a bad lifestyle, this means if you smoke a lot, if you drink a lot of alcohol, if you eat a lot of junk food, then you just use up a lot of that qing. Is there a barometer or how can I find out? Where is the other one? You now, as a doctor, will know. Yeah, there are people who seem very old. They have wrinkles way too early. Solarium, cigarettes and coffee. Because it dries out the skin. 
Qing also moisturizes the body, and that's just missing. And then you don't stay young, you just age far too early. You'll also die sooner. You will be ill sooner because you simply lose your power. But I only see it in the aging process of the skin. Or is it also on the pulse or on the tongue? Difficult. So feeling Qing on tongue and pulse is difficult. You really have to experience that in conversation. A person's mental vitality, a, a person's physical vitality, a person's appearance. These are criteria to see if the Qing is decreasing. Now, there are many phases with us humans where we might get out of it. For example, changes, just menopause, or in men there's also something like, what do you call it? Uh, when they hit their midlife crisis. <laughs> oh, men's menopause. <laughs> exactly. You know, where you get the feeling that you might be in a phase and are listless, dissatisfied, or especially we women with the hormone metabolism, that you notice what's going on now. Now it's really hitting hard. Does that have anything to do with it? The hormones have a lot of power there. In very small amounts, they can do a lot. But ultimately, you can also use the term that the sooner the Qing wears off, the earlier the climacteric comes, also a sign of ageing, of course. If someone has a good Qing, it's amazing in China, there are sometimes women there who make you wonder how it's possible to have pitch black hair without dyeing it. They look extremely youthful and you can't explain it. But the Chinese explain it in this Qing and with this way of life of the people that they live healthily in the sense of the Chinese dietetics, but also in terms of the properties they have in their social life. So, in context of marriage, but also with friends and acquaintances and relatives, that they lead a healthy life there. Every TCM doctor in China will also ask about this, how is their social life, and will also try to correct it. So it also plays a role in the ageing process. So I find it exciting with this Qing. You can't touch it, it's not a substance. But it's just a it's just such a fictional term. Great. Now I saw in your book that you have a mixture especially as mood booster. You have to strengthen that center. I have to look it up myself right now. It also says, for example, if someone is extremely exhausted, very tired, spontaneous sweating, well there comes this menopause topic again, for example. Slight fever. Oh, which page are you on for me to find it too? I have it on page 34. Oh, so I can check it too. I don't always know the page number to see that too. Wait a minute. Ah, I've got it. And then we have the page, the mood booster. Yes, exactly. A restorative agent, as well as an antidepressant. Yeah. For debilitating illnesses, stressful births, even after chemotherapy. Okay, serious surgeries. So just I could imagine that just brings this empowering force to life. People who have this disease actually lack this inner strength. We'd perhaps say vitality. In China, one would say Qing, but also Qi, both are missing. And you can't bring Qing to yourself through no food, through no behavior. You have to make sure that you at least strengthen your Qi. And that's what this mix does. I think it's a really, really super important recipe. Because if you don't have enough Qi, it's much easier to get into depression. It's very easy to get into exhaustion. Now we have another recipe, and that will come later, uh, which is important for someone after illness, like now with COVID, long COVID, for example. So there used to be conditions after influenza, no different than now. People also said after months or weeks after a bad flu, I just can't get up anymore. I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm weak. I have to go to bed early in the evening, I can't concentrate that much anymore. Exactly what is known as long COVID has always existed, even with unknown infections that are accompanied by fever, that have been long-lasting before they subsided. This symptom keeps coming back. Since this illness, I can no longer get back on my feet. 
And that's also a good remedy, especially when depression is involved, when there is severe fatigue. And we have a few other recipes in here that are helping with long COVID. I'd like to show one more later, but also after pregnancies, pregnancy can be very draining. Birth can be very draining. People lose a lot of chi and lose blood. This is a phenomenon that just keeps coming back. As expressed by patients, since I've had this pregnancy and had this birth, I'm just not the same anymore. I can't do it like I used to. There could also be dramatic experiences sometimes, like forceps delivery or any such stories. Oh, this also includes the famous caesarean section, and for these people it's great, it's for this well-known pregnancy depression. The name doesn't exist anymore. But this phenomenon still exists, that someone has given birth and then things go quite well for a while, and then suddenly the depressions come. Yes, postpartum depression. I also know that. Uh, triggered by... Yeah, you're still weak and then the little child's there, it wants to be cared for, it, ne it needs its care, it must have it too. And that's exhausting. And if it's a child who cries a lot, then you just don't get enough sleep, can't gather your strength, and there it's really good. What are the special ingredients? The plants that are in there are bupleurum is in there. That's a medicine that strengthens the liver. But it also prevents chi from going in the wrong directions in the body. That it doesn't shoot up as much. This brings the chi back from the head down to the center. Which is why it's said that it strengthens the center. And there are a few other herbs in there that also strengthen the center and give you strength. Quite famous and well-known, the penultimate, that would be ginseng. I knew that one too, but I also know that for concentration. But there are quite a lot of dangers in ginseng, and, and that's good to know. Ginseng is a remedy that actually calms, that relaxes, that, but also gives strength, which also supplies a lot of chi. But on the other hand, it has the disadvantage if I take in too much and the absorbed doesn't move in the body, then there is stagnation. And the more I have with me, the sooner it can lead to stagnation. So that's why this recipe also contains attractylodes. And that would be the third from the top, attractylodes macrocephala. You can also jot it down at home, page 34, mood booster. And ginseng is also often abused in China because everyone thinks, I have no strength, I need ginseng. Ginseng gives me strength. But that's only to a limited extent. Too much ginseng can have the opposite effect. And above all, you should always add something else. Any other herb that is notably capable of moving these amounts of ingested chi through ginseng to get it moving, to get it flowing. That's the third one then. Otherwise you can start sweating because you suddenly don't feel well anymore, because suddenly the weakness prevails. There are always two major factors. There is yin and there is yang. Yang is such a power and most people love power and yang. And when they hear that, they simply swallow it without a question. And after a while, suddenly the great exhaustion comes. The chi stagnation comes because the large amount can no longer be moved. And unmoved chi inevitably leads to pain. It can be back pain. It can be muscle pain, movement pain. There are many possibilities. Super exciting. If I now have this tea, and at the same time, I want to strengthen the inner center, but I still have eye problems we had in the last show. Can I now combine that by saying, let's kill two birds with one stone? Or do I have to be a bit careful? Or do some things overlap? Because if you say now that ginseng needs to be balanced... Exactly, definitely. The question is, what happens if I combine teas? Am I even allowed to do that? So, I would generally be wary of combining these teas that are so detailed. You can do it, though. So if you think, OK, I'll do that, I'll take two. 
Two, but also, I've read your book. I could use ten teas straight away. <laughs> Where I think, yes, that fits. Of course you can find yourself in many teas or you like to find yourself in many recipes. And then you just have to start and think about what is uh, the strongest symptom I suffer from and that's where you start. And then, and when that's gone, and when you're feeling well again, you can move on to the next thing. Could it also be since everything is connected in us? that I started with the first tea blend, that it's like a chain reaction. The other things in which I found myself in the nine other teas are also gone. Yeah. Maybe to repeat again, these mixtures are normally very personotropic. In this case, it's also given as a blanket medicine. But in general, with such a mixture, a symptom can also completely disappear. We're not talking about sickness, because sickness is different. But we must separate the terms neatly, sickness and disharmony. Sickness is a Western term and disharmony is an Eastern term. The recipes usually treat disharmony and often also the sicknesses, but often the treatment of disharmony is settled rather than just by treating the sickness. I need to know that I'm always treating more at the same time. A lot of personal things come into play about me through the concept of symptoms that I have, but also by the term indications. There you have the direction of a, a small kind, a form of individualization. Really great. Here, of course, we now have depression and exhaustion as an indication. But you have also added here, and I find that really exciting, this increase, decreasing spleen qi, qi deficiency, and blood deficiency leads to weakness, exhaustion. So what is the spleen qi? So what can I imagine by that? What does the spleen stand for? How do I recognize that? The spleen clearly stands for digestion in Chinese medicine. And in our sense, in the Western sense, there are many organ functions involved. For example, the function of the pancreas, the function of the intestines in digestion, everything is included. The kidney is basically the organ that converts food into qi. If the spleen works too weakly or too badly, then it can't do this. And then sometimes something develops that's called mucus in China. The term waste products would be quite good for us. Waste products develop that the body deposits somewhere because it can't use them, it cannot utilize them. The spleen, everything it can't evaluate because it's overwhelmed by eating the wrong food, by eating too much. It throws it somewhere in the body, deposits it in the joints, for example, or in fatty tissue. And then at some point we have problems with early joint pain or that there are skin problems early on or even thinking, thinking problems, it dumps it wherever there are opportunities. That is really a central issue because many people have the problem with waste products. The centre is, is the central subject in TCM and the spleen belongs to the centre. Strengthening the centre also means strengthening the spleen. How can I strengthen the spleen, looking at it holistically? Yeah, so we mentioned it before on the show, by eating slowly, chewing thoroughly, no business lunches, no distractions with mindfulness of eating. Chewing with mindfulness and trying to not eat things that are harmful to the body. Many people who suffer from mucus production, colds all the time, congested nose, congested throat, congested lungs. They should, according to Chinese medicine, for example, avoid dairy products because these products lead to congestion and, and thus the spleen can't keep up with processing this mucus. A little milk doesn't bother the spleen. It can easily do that, but it's, if it's overfed with milk, then it becomes difficult, especially in adulthood. Where is the spleen? The spleen as an organ with the liver, I know here, kidney there. Liver on the right side, spleen on the left. The Chinese see it a, a little differently. They used to have no examinations, no cadaver examinations. 
And based on how people tick, how they function, they drew a picture and imagined where the organs are located. That now the liver is on the left, for example. There's a saying that the liver is a left one. And with the Chinese, it sits here. Yeah, but these are purely ideas. And they are pictorial ideas. They'd never have thought of doing an operation. They wouldn't look in there, but they know how the liver works. They know how the spleen works. And in our medicine, things have gotten a bit better today. You can remove the spleen without causing major damage to the person. You'd never see that in China. On the other hand, there are functions of the organs that are not material at all. We'll never be able to operate on them. That's not possible. You can't operate on functions. They're still there. So this ability of the spleen to transform food into qi, you can't connect that with a substance of the spleen. This function is everywhere. And it's assigned to the center. It's very difficult to understand. Difficult subject. Yes, but exciting also, this topic. In terms of personality development, in terms of the psyche. What does the spleen stand for? What are examples? With liver, we have anger or kidney and fear. The spleen's a concern. Concern. When one's overly worried, they weaken their spleen. Likewise, if they eat the wrong food or eat in the wrong way. So, too fast. Then, of course, I can now support the spleen with such a tea mixture. One can support the spleen, but without a proper diet as defined by Chinese medicine, it doesn't do that much, so you have to change your eating habits. The spleen also loves warmth, so warm pads, and it doesn't like the cold. It doesn't like ice cream, for example. Well, ice cream's never good for me, even as a child, I never liked it. And on the other hand, we eat a lot of cold things from the fridge. That's more from America. There's just the option of putting everything in the fridge and eating it cool and thermally cool. If there's also an energetic coolness, there are also energetically cool foods. Mint and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Or everything you, you like to eat in summer is cool. Tomatoes, cucumbers are all cool. What you like to eat in winter is warming. Nuts, for example, cinnamon. All those Christmas spices are all warming. Cabbage. OK, then it doesn't make any sense to us. In the morning, there's also this trend with these cold smoothies, which you then put frozen berries in. No, you should warm it up so the cold doesn't strengthen anything. This weakens the spleen. And I can also justify it medically. Namely, our digestion is medically seen, Western medically, supported by enzymes, digestive enzymes. We need a large surface for that, which means you need to chew the whole thing up small so that the total surface becomes larger. Sure, such a ball has a small surface in relation to all the little chunks. The little chunks have much more. The principle of heating is an increase in surface area. And in addition to that, the, the spleen stands for these enzymes. However, the enzymes only work at certain temperatures, and funnily enough, at 37 degrees Celsius. Oh, and we're all cooled down. Right, we're all pretty cooled down, and that's bad for digestion, and weakens the spleen. The thing with the temperatures still has such a meaning, that just these 37 degrees Celsius, if you fall below them, the spleen needs... That's something fictitious now, basically, something functional, that the spleen has to expend a lot of power to reach this temperature. We know that in order to digest well, a person needs at least, I think, it needs 30 to 40 percent of its total energy only to digest. And if you always eat cold now, you need a lot more because it has to be warmed up by the body first. The spleen has the task of also generating heat to be able to digest better, in quotation marks. Then it simply becomes energetically difficult for the person because a lot of energy is lost in warming up the digestive organs. Well, I would like to go deeper on this topic in an interview, how we can generate this inner warmth holistically so that we really include all the building blocks. That would be important to me. An important factor. TCM is a strengthening of the center, as its name in the recipe. And in general, strengthening the center in all of Chinese medicine, be it acupuncture, be it qigong, it's an important factor, the center.
Thank you very much. It was so exciting again. Our time just flies. That's really great. If the viewers say, OK, that's interesting, where are opportunities to really delve deeper into it, to get good mixtures? We haven't even talked about that. Where do I get all these herbs from anyway? I can't get them from a supermarket. You're right, you need a good pharmacy. Usually a TCM pharmacy. One can buy in online stores. There's an online store from the train station pharmacy in Kempton. You can order it. You can order several things. So that would answer, how do I get the herbs? TCM pharmacy. How do I get the knowledge? Well, you have to read TCM books, which are also available for lay people, but that's a long way from TCM. And not in TCM, which deals with herbs. There is no herbal book actually for laymen. I checked, I can't find anything. And it was the same for me when I started reading as a young person. I think I started being interested in Chinese medicine when I was 20. I found nothing. And I still find today that my patients ask me where I can find out more. I have to say, patients, I don't know. Today I can say that there is a book that I wrote that you can read up on. And here you can learn the basics. You can use it to order recipes. And you can buy this book at quantisana.ch, I believe it's called, in Switzerland. The book can be ordered in Switzerland. And if you're interested in this TCM that I'm telling, then you might need the book and then you automatically come to further reading. And it will always remain as a layman at the layman's level. But you can draw valuable things from it and can improve your health or even your sicknesses and can heal yourself. Super. Great. Thank, Thank you for being here today and see you soon, dear Dieter. Thank you for having me. Dear viewers, it was incredibly interesting again. Above all, I read the book and one finds oneself in so many tea blends. And it's beautiful that nature gives us the opportunity to really find a way with a holistic view. Thank you for watching. More interviews, as always, at qs24.tv. And I wish you a nice time. Bye.